Got a little bit of a different video plan today. Uh, I'm always trying to share tips and tricks with you guys, ways to save money, ways to repair something rather than replace it. Um, in today's video, I want to talk about these ball hones that we picked up, okay? Uh, these are Flex Hone brand, BRM, Brush Research Manufacturing. I have no affiliation with them. Um, these are something that I've used before, um, and, and I've used them to really good success. So, um, I want to talk about cylinder honing today. To my knowledge, this is one of those topics people are either for it or against it. I'm for it sometimes, and I'm against it sometimes. Um... When should you hone? Actually, let's talk about when you shouldn't hone. Well, I don't hone um, chrome cylinders. Uh, I've done it before to really poor success. Um, I find chrome, chrome just doesn't take a hone very well. So I tend to not hone chrome cylinders. Um, I also don't hone cylinders uh, that look like they might be a little bit worn because of course, you're gonna take some plating off. Now, <clears throat> The common misconception about these is that, oh, and if you guys can notice, we got no heat going on today. I just, I wanted to come out here and make you guys a video. It's after work and uh, I wanted to hang out a little bit. The common misconception is that these take off tons of material and they really don't. Depending on what, what uh, type of abrasive, these are 320, uh, I believe they are Silico, uh, what does it say here? Let's look friends. I knew what they were when I ordered them Let me look here. I believe they are 320 silico uh, silica carbide Okay, don't quote me on that friends Now these are meant to be run at slow speed in and out. Let's read the instructions on them. Okay uh, It's all oh, silicon carbide Yes, these are silicon carbide. They're also in aluminum oxide, zirconia, alumia, boron carbide, levigated alumina, diamond, CBN, and ceramic. Okay, so these are available from 20 to 800 grit. I went with 320. That's what they recommend for Nicosil. And uh, I think these things are great, friends. I'm going to show you. We're going to do a random cylinder. I grabbed a 630 super cylinder. It is glazed. Um, no transfer on it. It looks like it has transfer, but it does not. These are not for taking transfer off. You still have to manually do that. These are for getting rid of glazing so that you can reseat rings. Okay. If you don't take the glaze off, uh, and I've experienced this quite a bit lately, some some of these aftermarket cylinders don't have enough of a cross hatch, and I find it's taking a long time. To break in rings especially if you're using a hard ring like a caber so um these put a nice cross hatch in there and i find the rings break in right now um i discovered this years ago my buddy had a set of these he let me try them on a couple of builds that i did and i found my pistons looked better and my rings broke in a lot sooner okay so when should you use these to break glazing this cylinder is glazed, and I'll show you guys that. It's very shiny in spots, okay? Um, after porting, I think these are a really good deal. These little balls go in and out of the ports, and you'll actually chamfer and take away a lot of that. If, if you chamfer, which is breaking the edge around your ports, um, if you miss a little bird, these will often clean it up, and you'll have pistons that just look phenomenal after, okay? Now... It says their recommended RPM is 600 to 1,000 RPM. I call that slow speed on a drill. Um, that's what we're going to do with them at. I'm going to put my DeWalt drill on low speed, and we'll, we'll do that. Uh, tools should be coated with lubricant 10 to 30 weight or flex hone oil, except when honing hydraulic uh, cylinders. Okay, honing should be approximately 20 to to 45 seconds per cylinder. Wash part with soapy water after and that'll get rid of the, your particulate. Um, I don't even do 20 seconds usually. I go one, two, three, turn it the other way, one, two, three. And we're, I'm gonna show you guys all that. And I find 
I have never wrecked a cylinder with one of these, okay? Never. And I've owned many, many, many cylinders. So I'm gonna show you guys what the deal is here. I'll bring you nice and close. I'm gonna show you this random cylinder. Let's do it together. And uh, you guys can decide for yourself. This is a highly controversial subject. I find a lot of people say, no, you can't hone these. And other people say, yes, you can. So this is just what I do, friends. Um, if you don't want to hone, don't hone. I was checking bore sizes because I noticed they're not marked on the package. Okay, so this one I ordered, this is 48 mil. Uh, I believe this one is 52. This one's 47. I was looking for 46. Couldn't find one in stock anywhere. Apparently, these can be slightly oversized. Now, I've never tested that theory, so I'm going to test it with this one. I'll get back to you guys. Okay, look at this cylinder. See the shiny spots? This cylinder is very glazed, okay? This came out of a 630 Super, 48 millimeter bore, okay? So what we're gonna attempt to do is put a cross hatch on there and resurface this cylinder, okay? Now, the cylinder looks like it's good to go. I don't see any wear in the plating or thin spots, so. Let's do this. Uh, I've been wanting to do this on video for quite a while. Just haven't found the time or, uh, you know, sometimes you get an idea in your head and you, you forget. That's, that's the funny thing, friends, about being on YouTube is like, you know, you're just putting your thoughts to video. And sometimes I forget about projects that I'm doing for myself or, but this is one of those ones I really, really wanted to try. So, uh, I'm going to put this on the good old stare at vice and let's try it together and you guys can tell i've been doing a lot of pipe making and and uh, welding lately i'll show you guys okay friends we're gonna put this in the vice look at that i've been having lots of fun lately oh well, that's what a shop should look like right i've never had a super clean shop because i'm always working in it i clean it up and then i get it dirty and then something breaks Especially when you're working on machinery and trucks and stuff. Okay, secure that in the vise. Make sure I got the right one here. This one. Okay. Good old brushless XR. Okay, I'm gonna put my drill on speed one. Okay. Now let me get some oil. I'm going to oil this thing good and we're going to go like one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and we'll have a look at it. Sometimes I'll do it a little more if I'm not happy with what I'm seeing. Sometimes I do it less. Uh, they say to do it for 20 or 30 seconds. Uh, I'm not that brave, friends. Just give me a second here. Okay, friends, got my oil. This oil is very, very thick right now. And uh need a little more. Now this does get messy. I'm gonna try and not spray the camera. I might actually move the camera back here. That way you guys can see. Okay, I'm gonna go in reverse, ready? One way, now I'm gonna go the other way. That's it, okay? And you want it running when you pull it out, okay? So when you're pulling it out, and you want it running when you're going in. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna clean this up and let's see what kind of finish these left and then we'll know. And then you guys could try or you could still say, I don't hone cylinders. I do hone cylinders, not all cylinders, but I hone cylinders, friends. And uh, okay, we'll put this on there. I have never heard a cylinder with one of these, never. Okay, not a cylinder that was that was good. If you hone with one of these and it hurts the cylinder, uh, usually the cylinder was no good anyways. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up real good and let's have a look-see. Okay, friends, look what we got here. Nice cross hatch. Now I can still see some glazing. You guys wanna go further? Okay. I don't feel any of this. So I have a feeling that this might be some wear in the plating. Let's go a little further and see what we get. 
This is just science, non-science science. science. Uh, I went the bare minimum and uh, let's keep going. Okay, ready? I'm gonna do another five strokes in and out left and five strokes in and out right. Okay, now let's go the other way. Okay, now, by all accounts, we should have wrecked this cylinder. Here, I'll just wipe it out right now. Let's do this in real time. No, no trickery here, friends. I'm a man of science. I've read a lot of stuff that you shouldn't hone Nicosil. Well, this is a Nicosil cylinder. And we just hone the living bejesus out of it. Look at that, friends. Beautiful. Okay. I see a few little marks on the exhaust side, but we're not going to worry about that. That's a low spot in the plating, so we had a little bit of scoring. But look at this nice finish. Let's see if you guys can see. Okay, it went all around the ports, took the rough edges out. Beauty. You guys want to do another one? Let's dig out another one and see what the deal is. Okay, 394. This is an oversized brush hone for this cylinder. Let's see if we wreck it. That's it. Uh, this one's a little tighter. I'm not gonna hit it as hard. Let's give her a wipe ski. And let's see what we got. We'll look at this on the bench, friends. Oh, I like what I'm seeing already. I gave these just a, a better wipe and uh, first thing I'm going to say, I think this might be a little bit of transfer in there. I can't feel it, but it seems kind of transfer-y. See, these will not take transfer off because they're, they're very fine, okay? I'm just, I don't feel it with my nail and sometimes you just have a slight low spot. That, that, that spot right there, that bigger spot below the exhaust port, I kind of feel that, but I'm not sure, so... Um, I guess it's a two in one. You cannot usually take transfer off of these. I've never been successful at it, but, uh, there you go. There's a 48 millimeter cylinder that's ready to rock and roll. Like this will seat rings beautifully. And the nice thing is, is what we can do. If you guys are interested after I build this 94, we can run it in and then look, what does the plating look like after it's been run in? Okay, I'm always trying to share knowledge with you guys and the only way to do it is to do these little experiments and get this stuff out there and then make your own decision. Um, I just do things my way. I'm just a fella puttering in my shop. I'm no different than most of you out there. It's uh, You guys build some good saws too. I, I see it all the time. You guys send me emails. Um, you, guys, you guys build some nasty saws. So... Um, my opinions are valid to me. See, now look, we clean this up. Remember how we, remember how we clean this up? I see a few little marks there over top of the exhaust port. But again, I can't feel them, so I, I'm not going to keep going at this thing trying to polish those out because that's when you could get a thin cylinder. Okay, but look, no damage to the plating. So I would say that this saw... She's dirty, eh? We're going to really have to go at this thing. You can see it's full of uh, scotch brite. But Nicosil is a lot tougher surface than most people will give it credit for. It really is. Okay, so I, I hope... I get asked this all the time. Tin Man, can I hone my cylinders? Um... There's other ways to hone cylinders. I've seen guys run these in dry and not have any issues. I wouldn't do that because it scares me. Is it wrong? I don't know. There's there's other people that run these dry. They just go zing, zing, zing. So, again, friends, everybody's experience is different. And uh, it just depends on what you've experienced. Maybe you like stills. Maybe you like Husqvarna's. Maybe you're Ford man. Maybe you're Chevy. That's how I am with all this stuff. Um... I see guys doing completely different things than I would do to port and still ending up with a really good saw. So it's like, who's right and who's wrong? Nobody. 
Um, and that's always been the point of this channel. I'm just sharing what I do in the shop. I'm just a fella hanging out in my shop, puttering. Um, you know, this is a passion. It's not a, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's something I do because I love it. And uh, I'm always learning, friends. The minute I stop learning, I'll do something else because I'll just get bored. So, um, so there you guys go. Uh, these, in Canada, these run about 50, 60 bucks per per uh, hone. And again, they're this brand. I don't know if there's different brands. Uh, these these brush research are the only ones I've ever used. And uh, I've had nothing but positive results with them. And again, friends, again, this is good stuff. When I hone a cylinder after porting it, I feel really good about the build. Everything just falls into line and uh you know i find they break in a little bit better the rings seat faster for sure because think about it you now have put this microscopic surface on there and the rings file against that and they end up you know filing each other in a little bit quicker is what i find you can't feel that either friends that's a misconception that feels smooth that is so microscopic you can just barely feel it and again this cylinder here I probably could do a little bit of work on the transfer because I do. I see some black spots. I did no work to the cylinder, friends. I pulled this out of the cylinder junk pile and uh, went to town on it. Now, um, again, I don't do chrome. Some people do. I, I just, I don't know. I've had bad experiences with chrome. I find these... You know, 80s and 90s uh, cylinders from Still and Husqvarna, they they hone up real nice. And I've saved 100% of the cylinders I've used the hone on. Um, ones that look questionable couldn't be honed anyways, but you guys know what I mean? Um, in my personal collection, the saws that have been honed, my original 266 that you guys have seen, um, I believe my 630 John Sered was honed. My 365 was honed. Um, what else out of the saws that are in here? I mean, I could go on and on, friends. My 562 was honed. It's, you know, uh, 044, the one that you guys like. I ran a hone through that before I put it together. Uh, that's an original saw. That is an original piston and rings. I just, I ran a hone through it to clean it up and slapped it back together and the rings filed back in. That's one of the nastiest 044s I've ever run. And it's like, it makes compression for days. So, anyhow, I don't want to keep going on and on. You guys understand, if if you're open to this stuff, try a hone. Um, I've saved many good cylinders with a hone, and they look good. And you guys saw that. I only, this cylinder I honed for like, what, 10 seconds? We'd have to time it on there. I went in and out like three times one way and in and out three times the other way. And look, now that that hone fit a little bit tighter in this bore. Um, the smaller one is the correct size for this bore. So um, I went, I had to go out a little more. But what I find, what I usually do, I do both ways and then I'll check. And then I do both ways and I check. And then I can kind of see what it's doing. Uh, I'm not good enough with a hone to just kind of know. But um Anyhow, friends, just another Friday night in the shop, hanging out with you guys, and uh, just wanted to share what I know with you. Cylinder honing, to do it or to not do it, that's up to you. I hone. Um, I've, I've honed more saws than I haven't honed, and I didn't know it was a thing not to hone them. I just honed them. Uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things. Uh, the three-shoe hones, that I've seen guys use those, and they say those work. Um, I hear not to use them. So if you use a three shoe hone, please post a comment. Um, I'm curious. I'm always curious what you guys are doing. I don't know everything and I'm learning all the time. And uh, I use these, the Dingleberry hones and they work great. So anyhow, friends, as always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. I'll see you guys in a couple days. Later.